Forget about young black women. Go speak to white men, particularly young and middle-aged. Speak to your white brothers. Don't speak with the black female colleague of yours. We all know that blacks are the problem. Let's explore. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Now, if you thought that my introductory comment was a little bit racist, you would of course be correct, but please don't shoot the messenger. All I did was to slightly amend the comments of an individual whose livelihood depends on British taxpayers, most of them white and male for that matter. Pat Gals, a hardline racist who hasn't worked a single day in the private sector, you know, the sector that actually brings value to society, told a few days ago at a communist rally in Wolverhampton that women and youngsters are the only ones who actually matter in the in-out referendum campaign, and that old white men are actually the problem. And yes, I will call labor communist because it's an appropriate term. Corbyn is to the left of Lenin, so you'll excuse me if I wish to differentiate between him and Gordon Brown, who was also wrong about most things, but at least wasn't a complete racist idiot, which is in itself rare in left-wing politicians. Anyway, when pressed for that comment, the communist spokesman doubled down on it and said that one shouldn't make a big fuss about it because it was, you know, a light-hearted comment and it was received in that way by the audience. Really? Tim Hunt didn't get the same benefit of the doubt from the same labor supporting racists, so why should this bigot get any wiggle room? Serious question. Because at the end of the day, it's clear clear that if this had been aimed at anyone except white men, the excuse that it was a light-hearted comment would not fly at all. And remember, this is the anti-racist party. Ultimately, the Remain campaign has been far less sophisticated than I expected. Now, if the Remain campaign wins, then this can only mean two things. Either most British voters are really that fucking stupid to fall for the fear-mongering of the establishmentarian cucks, or two, the referendum would have been rigged. Now, quite frankly, both of these seem possible. There is already early evidence that fraud at this referendum is being prepared, and it's also early evidence that there is a sizable chunk of the public that really is that bloody stupid. Now, admittedly, Britain has that shy Tory phenomenon tradition, which in this case may simply mean that voters will say whatever seems acceptable in the polls, but will actually vote something else when they're alone in the booth. <sighs> One more thing. It should be noted that the ever-reliable BBC has somehow missed on this story, and instead informed everyone on the front page about the health status of Muhammad Ali. Now, mind you, at the time, the boxer wasn't dead yet. Because we all know that the pressing matter in British life now is Muhammad Ali, not the future of the country that is due to be decided just, you know, a week and something from now. Yet people think I'm exaggerating when I say that all state-subsidized press is cancer by definition and always becomes the mouthpiece of the establishment while you pay for it. Anyway, that's all I have to say, and um, if you're British and watching this, seriously, don't forget to vote. Leave. Talk to you all soon. Thank you for watching.